The next control we're going to build is a load progress bar, which shows us how much of the video has been downloaded. I'll show you an example here. If I reload the page, you can see the blue bar grow as the video plays. Now if you're loading the video from your computer, the blue bar will probably jump all the way to the end right away. But I'm loading this from the internet so we can actually see the gradual download of the video. So now we're going to go and build this bar. Let's go back to our code. I'm going to start right where we left off with the play progress. And we're going to add another div inside the progress bar holder. And this one's going to be for a load progress. And we're going to put this above the play progress because we want the green bar to show in front of the blue bar so that even once the entire video has been downloaded, the green bar still shows in front of it. So I'm going to add a div with an ID of load underscore progress and that div. Okay, and that's all we need in the HTML. And let's go to our CSS. And for this, I'm basically going to do the same thing we did with the play progress. So I'm going to copy that and paste it and change the name to load progress. And we want the position to be absolute again, and we're going to change the background color to that blue, which is 69C. Now we're going to go to our JavaScript, which is where we're going to do the bulk of the work here. And let's start with a new section called load progress. All right. And then with the load progress, we're going to bind to the progress event. The progress event is triggered continuously as the video loads from the internet. So we're going to bind to the video element again and the progress event. All right, and then we need to pass a function to it so that we can tell it what to do. And then the property we're going to use to get the loaded amount is the buffered property of the video element. This isn't a simple percentage, unfortunately. It's in the form of an object called a time range, which has multiple pieces to it. It actually stores an array or a list of buffered amounts for the video, or at least it will in the future. Right now, we just need two pieces of it. And the first is the length. And we're going to start with a conditional statement because we're actually just checking to make sure there is length. So if video, and then we're using the buffered attribute, and then the length attribute of buffered. And we want to make sure that the length is greater than zero. Because if we try and use the buffered attribute before there's any length to it, it can throw an error. And we don't want that. Now we're basically calculating percent in a similar way that we did for the play progress. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new variable. We'll just call this percent. And now we're going to use another attribute of buffered, which is end. And that's actually a method that will pass 0 to. That's not very straightforward, but what we're basically doing is looking at the end in seconds of the first buffer in the list. So 0 means the first buffer in the list, and we're looking at the end of that. All right. so. It's a little bit complicated, but once you've done it the first time, you can basically just copy and paste and know how it works. Then we're going to divide that. We got the amount downloaded in seconds, so we can divide that by the video's duration. And so we can do video.duration. It's very similar to the play progress. And so just like that, we're going to multiply the whole thing again by 100 so we can get the integer representation of it. OK, so now we're dividing the amount that's been downloaded in seconds by the duration and multiplying that by 100 to get our percent, and basically how big we want the load bar to be. So now let's actually apply that to the load bar. We're going to select it with jQuery and the load progress ID that we gave to it. And we can use the CSS method again to change the styles dynamically and we're going to change the width and give it our percent that we just calculated plus the percent character so that css knows that it is a percent that we're passing to the width and we'll end that line 
Now if we save that, we go to our web browser and open up that page again and reload it. If we play it, we should see the blue bar jump at the end. Now it didn't start loading automatically because we have preload none on our video tag, so it knew not to start preloading it. But as soon as we played, it started loading the video, and since the video is local, it just jumped right to the end. So just so we can see it in action, I'm going to go back to our HTML and load up the version that's on the website. So I'm using Firefox. I'm just going to change the URL of the WebM version, which Firefox is playing. I'll change that to the www.explorecalifornia.org. So now we're pointing to the one that's hosted on the web. And I'm going to change preload to auto. So now we'll just start preloading automatically. We go back to Firefox, reload the page. We can see the blue bar now start to grow gradually as the browser downloads the video. Okay, and that's what we want to happen. And if we hit play, we can see the green bar is still on top of the blue bar. That's what we want too. Okay, now unfortunately browsers aren't super consistent when they trigger the progress event. So we actually need to add some backups to make sure the load progress gets calculated. So to do that, let's go back to our code, and we're going to first go to JavaScript. I'm going to break out this code here that calculates the progress into its own function so that we can call it from multiple events. So below this, we're going to make a new function. I'm going to call it update load progress. All right. And then in this function, we're going to take all this code that we just wrote in the progress event and cut that and paste it in our new function. So now it's a little bit more portable. It's in the form of a function that we can call in multiple places. And we're going to actually copy that name and put it in our progress event so that we continue to call the same code that we just copied out of it. All right, so now it's actually doing the exact same thing. We just have a more portable bit of code that calculates the load progress. So if we save that and go back to our browser, we should see the same thing happen. Okay, yeah, so the blue bar is still continuing to grow. So good. Now what we can do is actually call this update load progress method in a couple different events that the video element might trigger to make sure that it's backed up and actually gets called. So what I'm going to do is actually just copy this line for our progress event and paste it. Um, we're going to use it three more times, actually. So the first time, we want to bind it to the progress event. The next time, we're going to bind it to the loaded data event, which is called whenever the browser starts loading data. And so this is just a backup in case the browser doesn't call that progress event. It will call it when the browser first starts loading the data. All right, then the next time that we want to make sure the load progress is calculated is on the can play through event. It's another event that the browser will trigger. And in this case, it plays it when the browser thinks it's downloaded enough information that it can play through the video without having to stop and wait for more data to download. So that's just another point that we want to make sure that the load progress has been calculated. And the last one, we're actually going to bind it to the playing event. And the playing event is just called continuously throughout as the video is being played. We're binding it to playing just so that it continues to calculate continuously through the playback of the video. So let's save that and just make sure that it continues to work as expected. And we can play the video. Continues to work. Great. It gets to the end and it finishes loading. That's working as expected, and that's how we create a load progress bar.